Hello, Vol Nation. Welcome to another episode of Believe in Tennessee Football. I'm your host, as always, Kyler Ferguson. Not joined with Reed Bacon again this week. Um, but that's fine because I get to go on rants and don't have Reed cut me off. So it's okay. Uh, so listen, before we get into anything, please hit that like button, hit that notification bell, subscribe, please rate and review on your podcast platforms. It helps us so much and leave comments. It literally helps so much on the algorithm on YouTube. Um, but we're going to be talking about Tennessee basketball. They're huge up in a win versus Kentucky and bad down with a loss versus Arkansas and Tennessee baseball is back. I love it. Uh, we're two and zero right now versus Georgia Southern. So riding high and then I've got a hot take that maybe the downfall of Tennessee football was good for this athletic program so we shall see uh, but with further ado let's jump into it the game. snap the kick is in the air and the kick this time is no sir Reed. no sir Final score, Tennessee 20, Florida 17, pandemonium reigns. Looks, loads up, fires long for the end zone, the pass is going to be caught on Tennessee. Tennessee wins! And it's by Tennessee to one Jennings. Jennings makes the catch in the end zone on the Hail Mary. Down at the 35, to the 40, to the 45, to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, to the 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. What did he do? All he did was score. Joey Pitt, touchdown on play number one. All right, so before we jump into the podcast, shout out our number one sponsor, as always, betonline.ag. Listen, if you're wanting to make anything exciting, you got to bet on it. It's makes it so much better. Um, even if you're following a team that you're not necessarily a fan of, you put some money down, that thing gets very exciting. You're really watching that game. Um, Bet online is that place to do it. It's got all the news, the stats, the scores, the odds, everything you could think of. They cover every sport too, football, basketball, boxing, golf, everything you could think of. That is the place to go. So, when you head over, check out their new uh, mobile site, uh, their new website, and when you sign up, you'll receive a 50% welcome bonus if you use the code BELIEVE. That's B-L-E-A-V when you sign up. So 50% welcome bonus. That's awesome. 50% on your first deposit. That's amazing. Um, so before you watch any games, before you enjoy any sports, head on over to Bet Online, put some money down on it, make it exciting. Bet online. It's where the game starts. All right. Welcome in, everyone. Uh, I am going solo again today, and that's completely fine. Uh, I've done it many, many times before, so no big deal. Uh, Reed is hanging out with his beautiful girlfriend, uh, Ariel. Looks like he uh, hasn't figured out how to hang out with the girlfriend and also be with the mistress on the side, which is me. Uh, but, uh, he's also missing out on this awesome new shirt I got. Oilers, baby. I freaking love it. Um, I feel like it's also, it's so tough to find good team gear. I love the classic looking stuff. Um, I have more like classic looking Tennessee stuff than, than regular, like up to date Nike stuff. Anyways, um, gonna have a great podcast today. Let's talk about basketball first. I guess we'll start off earlier in the week. I mean, dude, the win versus Kentucky was huge. God, it felt so good. Uh, really felt like we were back to where we were supposed to be. Um, that this team can compete with anybody. Uh, that, you know, we actually have a cohesive unit. And when we put effort in on defense, we can stop whoever we want. It, it, it's just you can't let them wide open threes happen. In the last pod, I talked about it. Like Vandy shooting those wide open threes, we couldn't let that happen. Dude, our defense versus Kentucky was amazing. So much effort, so much aggression. 
Then Folky comes out of nowhere. He just plays great. He plays awesome. I love to see that. That was, you know, his last opportunity to take down Kentucky. Uh, and it just made it feel so much better. Because uh, I know we've all supported Folky for, you know, his entire career. And he's been a fan favorite. And to see him kind of go out on top versus his rival, it, it did feel, it felt very good, especially like a bounce back game for him because he had not been performing well up until then. And to have a good game, to really be like, I think the MVP of that game, um, it just, it, it's a good cap to a career. Because I know exactly the kind of feelings he's going through knowing that, you know, he's not going to be, playing basketball at UT much longer and you know he can try and continue his career but I don't know you know Folky doesn't seem like a NBA all-star so I don't know how much more basketball he's going to get to play um so being able to finish your career versus your rival with a home in your home with a win in your home stadium is huge it's awesome now we come back down off the mountain. We play Arkansas uh, on Saturday. And boy, is that embarrassing. I mean, man, our shooting, I, I I've never seen anything like it. I literally did not understand what was going on, why guys were missing as much as they were. Um, and I hate this narrative of like, Oh, what a great defensive battle. Like, these defenses are elite. No. Our defense is elite. We're number 27 in the nation in defense. Our defense is elite. Arkansas is 120th. They are not a good defense. This should not have happened versus us. They don't have a good enough defense to shut us down like that. We were missing our shots. This wasn't them playing great defense. Now, listen. Watching them, watching their effort, watching them switch off screens, they did a pretty good job. They were being aggressive. They were staying in our face. That was what they were supposed to do. But that does not mean that their defense was the reason why we lost. We lost because we could not make a damn basket. It, plain and simple. And nobody stu stepped up. Nobody. Nobody made that big difference. Nobody came in and said, hey, give me that ball. I'm about to go score eight, stop their run, and we're going to be in this thing. And it, it, No big deal. It was missed shot after missed shot after missed shot. I think our defensive performance was great. I loved our defensive performance because that was the only way we were still in that game, um, even though Arkansas did miss a good amount of their shots. But just, I mean, let me take you through some of these stats. Viscovi, bud, what – how can you be that hot and, and that cold? It's insane. One for nine from three and two for 13 from the field. It just The only thing that he did well was rebound. He got some defensive rebound. He got 11 rebounds. And yes, that's awesome. But I almost see it as like stat padding-esque rebounds, like, a, like Russell Westbrook rebounds, where it's like, did that make a difference in the game? I really don't know. Um, Chandler, one for five from three, five for 15 from the floor. <laughs> Josiah Jordan James, 0 for six from three, four for 13 from the floor. And, uh, you know, Folky, after I just praised you so much for that Kentucky game, what happened? What happened? You had 19 minutes on the floor, 0 for two. Took two shots, 0 for 2, three, re three rebounds, two points. That's all that you could give us. That's it. That, 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 that's the best that you could do in your 19 minutes on the floor. I, I mean, what's the point of having you? Our starting five didn't do anything. Our bench players didn't do anything. It, it, it was embarrassing how bad we played. It, it, like, that game was not won by Arkansas. It was lost by us. I cannot believe the amount of shots we missed. Honestly, insane. I mean... Uh, Ziegler was the, was the best player of that game. And, you know, he's coming off the bench. And he played a good amount of minutes. I think he should have taken more shots because nobody else was making any. He should have been the one taking shots. I 
I just don't understand how this team can be so up versus Kentucky and then be so down versus Arkansas. And it makes me feel bad for Rick Barnes because I don't think this is a Rick Barnes issue. I don't think it's, oh, he's putting the wrong lineup out there or, oh, he's not coaching them correctly or helping them understand what defense Arkansas is running. Like, I don't think that is it at all. I think it's literally just the players. Like, sometimes it's the Jimmys and the Joes, not the X's and O's. And I think these guys are just very much roller coaster like players. They can get up for big games and be really good. And this was almost more important than that Kentucky game. Kentucky game, yeah, we were favored at home, but if we lost, people would understand. And once we won, it really put a target on our back as a good team in the SEC. And it was, okay, now prove it. Now prove that you're a good team in the SEC. Prove that you're a team Auburn should worry about. You're a team that Kentucky should worry. You're a team that can make a deep run in the tournament. Go out and prove it. And they shit the bed. They literally fell apart. They couldn't make a damn basket. They couldn't get any uh, rebounds on defense. Uh, how many offensive rebounds that we should have had. And let Arkansas just take this game away from them with a lackluster Arkansas team that's okay but not great. Uh, it's just damn, dude. Like every single time – you know, we're we're have our hopes in this in this Tennessee basketball team, it falls off every single time. And it seems like it's been doing that over these recent years. Like with the Grants and, and the Schofields on the team. Like there was those times where it's like, dude, we have the best team in the nation right now. Like we can beat anybody and then, you know, we lose to Loyola of Chicago. <laughs> like this kind of up and down is, oh, man, it's painful as a fan. I'll tell you what. Everybody is with me on this sentiment. I, I know you are. And it seems as if a lot of our fandom is doing that uh, with football, uh, especially. And uh, I still do think that Rick Barnes is a good coach. I know Reed hates him. Reed absolutely hates him, so he would be disagreeing with me right now. I know that Rick Barnes is a good coach. I don't know if he's a great coach. I don't know if he's going to be the one to get us over the hump and through the tournament. But some of these losses that I see, I don't necessarily see him as his fault. And I, I don't know if that's the ex-player point of view where I'm like, hey, go out and go out and perform. Like, what the hell are you doing? Like, if we were to lose a game while I'm playing, and it's because we didn't run the ball well enough, uh, we gave up too many sacks, and you know there was a, a center quarterback exchange fumble and like a turnover. Like, in no way am I blaming the coaching for that. I'm blaming us. I'm blaming the offensive line. I'm blaming myself. Being like, why was that double team not great? Why were you not able to get up to the linebacker on that block? Why did you fall over your face? What happened with the center quarterback exchange? What? Why did you have bad footwork and get beat around the edge? Why? Why were you not fighting with your hands against that defensive end? Like, those are the things that I'm looking at. Those are the things that I'm calling out. In no way am I like, yeah, coach, you shouldn't have called a pass play here. You you can call whatever play you want if your players execute. If your player, if all eleven execute like they're supposed to, you can call whatever play you want, and it'll work. So that's why I just really lean on a player's performance more than more than coaching. I think it makes a lot bigger difference. I mean, you see the L.A. Rams and the fact that they won this Super Bowl, like. I really don't think it's a bunch of coaching that happened. I think it's, hey, we chose the right guys to come on our team. Vaughn Miller's a freaking beast. Aaron Donald's a beast. can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. Odo Beckham did very well. Uh, Cooper Cup, just making plays, man. Just back shoulder fade and making plays. Matthew Stafford, back shoulder fade and making plays. Like, you call that pass play on the goal line. 
it could go horribly. Russell Wilson tried to throw a pass on the goal line. It went horribly because Malcolm Butler made a play, not because Bill Belichick made the right coverage call, not because he said, hey, man up here. It, it, it's it's the players. It's the players making, making the plays. So I'm going to lean on the players. I'm calling out all of our guys and saying – you know, it was player performance. That is the reason why he lost this game. It is, does not have anything to do with Rick Barnes. And I know people want to come for Rick Barnes whenever we do lose games. I think there's instances of that. Bad timeout calls. Um, bad substitutions. Uh, you know, having a bunch of defensive guys on when you need to score points. Stuff like that. Yes, that makes sense. But this game is all on the players. And... All on them, all on their pride as players to try and bounce back after this because we do have Auburn coming up. And even though we didn't lose this game, Auburn can be a very, very big statement game for this team and a huge momentum swing going into SEC tournament play and then NCAA tournament play. Um, so I, I still have hopes for this team. I'm still excited for this team. Um, like we saw the, earlier this week, they can beat a very good team in Kentucky. So if they play like that versus Auburn, they can beat Auburn. But it's all about playing like that. I just really hope this is an eye-opener because I think the first Kentucky loss very much was an eye-opener for these guys. Hopefully Arkansas can be the same thing. Um, but, I mean, when you shoot 27% from the floor – I'm not blaming coaching. <laughs> like, that's not happening. I'm blaming you guys. When I block 20%, if I were to block and only block my guy 27% of the time, you think that's coaching? Or you think it's me? I think it's me. So that's why I'm blaming the players for this one. Okay, so sorry to interrupt, but we have another ad. Uh, this one is NordVPN. So for any of those people out there who really just want to expand their watching experience, uh, we know we have a lot of great shows on the Netflix, on the HBOs, but sometimes there's good shows in other countries. Um, actually, when, when I was up in Canada playing for the CFL for a cup of coffee, I couldn't watch Game of Thrones because I was in Canada. It was only on HBO USA. So I had to use a VPN to watch Game of Thrones when it was coming out. Um, so VPNs are awesome for checking out all that kind of stuff that you really wouldn't usually get in your country. Also, it can help if you're trying to stream a game. If you're living down in Florida and you want to catch a Nashville, you know, you want to catch a Titans game up here in Nashville, they're going to show you the Dolphins game. But if you change that VPN, if you change your location, you can watch that Titans game. It's very, very valuable. So, NordVPN is the place to go if you really want to be able to change your location and take advantage of these streaming platforms and get every single thing that you can out of them. So to grab your exclusive offer from NordVPN, go to nordvpn.com slash believe and use the code believe, B-L-E-A-V, uh, and get 70% off your NordVPN plan, 70% off. Um with one additional month for free. I mean, talk about a deal, 70% off and you get an extra month. And what's also great is that it's a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you, for some weird reason, don't enjoy it, you're getting your money back. So no harm, no foul. Uh, that's why NordVPN is the place to check out, really open up your streaming platforms and have a little bit better entertainment in your life. So go ahead and check them out, NordVPN. Okay there, listeners, we've got another ad here. This one is Athletic Greens. So tons of people take multivitamins, but it's important to choose one that is top quality. With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to start your day right. Their special blend of ingredients supports gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, energy, recovery, focus, and even aging. It's also lifestyle friendly and fits a wide range of diets. There's only one gram of sugar and no chemicals or artificial anything. So 
to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, it's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash believe. That's B-L-E-A-V. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash believe. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Athletic Greens. Take ownership of your health. Um, all right, let's uh, switch into baseball. I absolutely love that baseball is back. Um, it is such a fun sport to be a part of. It, it's so strange, too, because growing up, I never really cared for baseball. I tried playing it a couple times. I really wasn't that good. And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I, I, I don't even really get into MLB baseball. I think it kind of gets boring to me. I, I don't really care enough. But my Tennessee fandom has made me fall in love with this team. I also think it's Tony Vitello, man. The Dude, I cannot put into words what a turnaround this baseball team has had. I mean, they were horrible when I played there. They were seen as so bad one of the worst teams on campus and Tony is able has been able to turn that completely around he makes everything fun for this team he makes being the heel a fun thing he makes it to where other teams are literally complaining about us literally complaining about our dugout our fans when they're not even playing us they're concentrating on us Arkansas baby concentrate on us and not paying attention to Illinois State, who beats him on Friday. Today's Sunday. I haven't watched the third game versus Georgia Southern. So, don't know how the series ends. But this team is so exciting to watch. They're so fun. They are having so much fun out there. It It's like the, you know, look good, feel good, play good of the Deion Sanders. Like, if you make it fun for these guys, like... Make it enjoyable. Make it to where they really want to support each other. And it's never like an individualistic kind of thing. It's never, well, I want to make the home run. I want to get the hit. It's let's celebrate the guy who does. Let's celebrate the guy who does well. It's insane how contagious that can be. It really is. It, it, this team has turned around so much because of Tony and how fun he's made it. I mean, the pimp coat, baby, the daddy hat, that shit is fire. It is swagged out to the upteenth degree and makes this so much fun to watch, makes Vol Twitter hilarious to be on when these games are going on and afterwards. I, I mean, hello, win column, all of the sayings, it, it's, it's so joyful. It really is. It is such a joyful experience to watch this baseball team. And man, are they good in crunch time. This team is so exciting because they'll play that defensive battle for those first few innings and it's figuring each other out and it's a pitching battle and it's, and it's, you know, back and forth and, is that a ball? Is that a strike? Can I hit this slider? Am I watching these pitches? Am I getting him to pitch a lot? Like getting his pitch count way up? It's a defensive battle start. And as soon as they get their opportunity, as soon as they get their chance on this pitcher, as soon as he gets a little tired, bam, they take advantage. They hit those deep balls. They hit those home runs. They bring in those two RBIs. It is so exciting because it keeps you on the edge of your seat and then pow, explodes. That is a good team. That is a good team to hold steady, understand this pitcher, get to know him, and then take advantage of what he's doing. It's just like a boxer, just testing you out, you know, ducking, get a little bit of jabs in here, feel your game plan, what you're trying to do, and then taking advantage of you over swinging. I absolutely love this team. I mean, in they've played two games, 18 total innings, Nine of the innings, they did not score runs. So 
half of the innings they've played, they don't score, yet they have 19 points in two games. That's crazy. 19 points in one game, pretty much. Nine innings. So they literally explode at certain points. And to take advantage of runners on base is huge also. Uh, you know, the, the teams that leave guys on base – and head back into the dugout is it's it's literally the worst. It's demoralizing. It's something that can really uh, kill the morale for the team, kill momentum that that, that they might have had. So taking advantage of guys on base, making sure that we get them home before we get out of that inning is huge. And like I said, just just Tony Vitello is one of the best coaches we have on campus. His charisma, um, he's a good-looking dude, and I, I'm scared of my masculinity to say it. That guy is good-looking, and uh, that helps with fandom, too, <laughs> having a good-looking coach because ladies will come and watch and men will come and watch. Everybody comes to watch the good-looking guy. Uh, and his energy, his tenacity, he doesn't put up with bullcrap rest. He doesn't put up with bullcrap coaches doing extra shit on the sidelines. He he gets in their face. He, he's not a pushover, and he knows how to have fun with the players. So he was a great hire. I'm so excited he's here. I cannot wait for his entire career with Tennessee. I cannot wait for this baseball season. It's going to be so much fun and getting into the tournament. And trying to get to Omaha, I, I'm so excited. And I love the fact that we're 19th and we're 8th in the SEC. And there's literally seven teams in the – there's six teams in the top ten of the SEC. Like, SEC is loaded and we're seen as, you know, middle of the pack at 19. I love that. I love that. I don't want to be favored. I don't want to be the underdog. I want people to doubt us. I want to show them that they don't know – Shit about us, baby. They don't know us like that. We're going to step up to the plate. We're going to win it this year. Screw all of them. Screw Mississippi Strait. Screw Arkansas. Screw Florida. We are the ones who are going to take this crown. We're the ones. So, super excited for baseball. Cannot wait for all of that to flourish and keep going. Last thing that I wanted to talk about, and I almost wish Reed was here to possibly dispute this hot take that I have. I don't know if it's necessarily a hot take, but with Tennessee football being as bad as it has been over recent years, and hey, don't get me wrong, there's been some good times. I was a part of it. 2015 was a pretty good year. Very close losses to very good teams. We turned it around, won nine games. Still, it hasn't been good recently. Really down in the dumps. And Tennessee fans have truly been searching for something to give them joy. It is why they fought so hard for Greg Schiano not to be our head coach. It's why Vol Twitter has exploded over recent years. And fans of all across the country know what Vol Twitter is. This isn't just a local thing anymore. These fans have been dying for something. And I think because of that, all of our other sports have stepped up. I think the demise of football have grown our other sports. Back in the early 2000s, we were dominating football, always in the top 10, always highly ranked, going to SEC championships. What was baseball doing? What 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 what, what happened with softball? What, 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 was basketball any good? Uh, I don't remember. It, everything kind of gets pushed to the wayside. And and I think it's, you know, because football for most schools are is the money maker, so it brings in everything. But fandom really makes a difference in teams, in growth, in 
being able to succeed. Fans switching their hopes to basketball when a bad football season ends and switching their hopes to baseball and to softball and to volleyball and to tennis and to track, moving their hopes into those sports and not having them solely on football makes those sports more important. It, it makes the players of those sports feel more important and makes them want to try harder for those fans, want to succeed more to have that joy come upon them. Baseball literally just had the, the best opening day it's had in forever. It, it's had more fans than it ever has. And I think it is because of the demise of football. It is because football fell so far off and people really didn't have much hope for it. They looked to something else and they were able to find it in baseball. And I think the fandom, people packing those stadiums, people supporting, buying merch, talking about Tony on, on social media, talking about the team on social media, gives those players confidence, man. It, it makes them play better. I really truly believe that. I think fandom can help in the performance of players. I think confidence is key when you're playing your sport. If you don't believe in yourself, if you don't think that you're going to hit this ball out of the park, you're never going to do it. If you don't think that you're going to make that basket, you're never going to do it. If you don't think that you're going to make that throw, make that catch, make that block, make that tackle, you're never going to do it. You have to believe that you will. And I truly believe that fandom, having fans there, having them there rooting you on, believing in you, helps you to believe in yourself helps you to perform better. So it's almost to the point that football being bad these past 10, 15 years has elevated the other sports. It has brought them to the forefront. It, it has made men's basketball better. It has made baseball better. It has made tennis better. It has made diving better. Like It makes all of these other sports better because now pressure's on you. It's time to step up. It's time to be there for the Vol faithful, for Vol Nation. We needed you guys, and you stepped up in a big way. And now, now you're here. Now you're way above where you used to be. Mediocre, middle of the pack, just pitter-pattering along for all those years. Now pressure's on you. Now everybody's watching you. Now everybody wants you to succeed eyes on you, bam, elevated. Now we're at another level. Now baseball's at another level. Basketball, every other sport, the, literally at other levels, now everything's better. Now we're bringing in money. We're not in the, in, the, in the red when it comes to these other sports. Maybe they can cover their own expenses because they're doing so well. Maybe we can use that extra money to build up facilities, to, 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 to help players get NIL deals, to... to to better everything that goes into the athletic program, to pay coaches more. So in a weird roundabout way, having bad football developed the rest of the athletic program from the ground up. It helped elevate those other teams, make them better than they can, make them better than they think they can be. They literally think they had this ceiling, and we and fandom made them push through it um, and absolutely elevate their play. So the downfall of football has helped build a fundamental good foundation for the rest of this athletic department to where now football going on the rise is going to be that much more palpable. It's going to be that much more. It's going to mean so much more to this school because now it's back on the rise and it's in the rise with everybody. And we're all going to be successful together. I love that. I felt as if when I played there, there was a divide that, you know, we hung out with basketball, but we never really hung out with baseball. Football didn't hang out with baseball. Why? Why is that? That's weird. We're both... We're all athletes. We're all going through the same stuff. We all have to play all these games, go to all these practices, take all these classes. Why? 
why we're, you know, volleyball friends with the football team, but we didn't hang out with soccer. Why, why, why was there this divide? Why did I never really get to know any tennis guys? Why did I never really get to know any track guys? Like, why was this sort of divide between sports? Why were we more connected? Hell, there's the Thornton Center. People, you'd see every athlete there, and they're in the building. So I think the growth of all these other teams can truly bring them together. It's just so exciting to see. It really is. I love every second of it. I'm excited for every season that we have. And it's not just a football thing. And I don't have all my hopes there. I, I'm excited to root for baseball. I'm excited to root for basketball. I'm excited to root for women's basketball and Kelly Harper. I'm excited to root for any team that we have because, man, I bleed orange. I know you guys do too. And every single game feels important. And it didn't feel like that before. And I think it was because football was our main go-to. It was the only thing we concentrated on. And now we've got other sports. We have other things to bring us joy, which, I mean, doesn't get any better than that. So, all right. I I appreciate you guys coming on. I, I thank you so much for uh, listening to the rant. Um, please let people know about the podcast. So Reed should be back next week. Um and, you know, we'll talk about everything that I talked about on this podcast because I'm sure he has some opinions on it. Uh, but if you're watching, please uh, subscribe, like, share the video, turn on that notification bell so you see when our videos come out. If you're listening, please follow and, and rate. Give us five stars. Uh, share with your friends and family. Let them know what we got going on if you want to contact us. Uh, email is believe in Tennessee football at gmail.com. Phone number is 865-322-9232. And follow us on social media. Believe in Tennessee on Twitter, R Bacon26 for Reed. Uh, I'm at Kyler Curbison, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So follow me there. Uh, and just appreciate you guys so much. Appreciate you listening. Appreciate you watching. You're the best. Um, and as always, Go balls.